The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask the Premier about the Crown lands in Owl's Head in Little Harbour. In March of last year, the, the government passed a, a confidential minute letter by means of which Owl's Head Provincial Park was removed from the list of pending protected areas. And then in December, a couple of months ago, thanks only to the investigative work of a, a diligent journalist, this fact came to public light. And then last month, in January, the government quietly removed the park from the online map of protected areas. So I want to ask the Premier if he would share his reasoning uh, as to why his government did not consult or did not engage or did not even inform the public at any point along this process. Order, please. I'd like to remind uh, the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party that uh, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, that the... Uh, topic at hand appears on the order paper now twice, one in the form of the bill that uh, your party introduced just uh, a short while ago uh, on this day, as well as it's the topic for late debate. So uh, that eliminates it as fodder for question period. The, 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 the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Uh, uh, m might, I, might I call for a reconsideration of that judgment? The, uh, is it in fact the case that the entire subject that is pointed to uh, in such a bill is uh, not legitimate subject for discussion on such a day in the House? That has not been my previous understanding. We would have been okay if the short title of the bill printed right on the uh, second page wasn't the Owl's Head Act. So you're, you're speaking specifically about a scenario that is the topic of a bill and is the topic of late debate, both of which are on the order paper. So if you have a general question uh, about a general process, that's fine, but your question to me is specific about a specific situation. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Uh, uh, well, I, I, would, uh, I would like to ask, uh, without mentioning the name of any particular communities on the Eastern Shore, uh, <laughs> if in general, when the government attends to the disposition and the potential future of Crown lands, if it does not find it overall a wiser course of action to consult and engage and inform than to not do so. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for your patience. The Honourable Premier. I want to thank uh, the Honourable Member for his question and uh, his ability to think quick on his feet. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I do want to talk to him seriously about this issue, uh, Mr. Speaker, in, in his uh, Earlier preamble, he, he actually alluded to the fact this was not a, a protected area. It was a, a, on a, a, a list of potential protected areas. Uh, and like all pieces of Crown land, uh, Mr. Speaker, when uh, someone, uh, whether being used or looking to buy that piece of Crown land, there's a process that you would go through. Uh, there was an offer made on that piece of property. And as part of that process, Mr. Speaker, there would have to be public consultation and public input uh, to go forward. Uh, and that would have been part of the ongoing process uh, if that property had been sold. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the Premier raises the point, which has been raised much in the government's discourse about this, about the technical or juridical status of this piece of Crown land, whether you know, pending, not pending, park, not park, and so on. Um, what, I'm, uh, what I'm wanting to point to, though, is that uh, there has been a, a broad understanding, uh, as there might be uh, amongst the public, when maps, government reports, uh, uh, things like the Colin Stewart Forest Forum, other things, when, uh, when these things have all uh, indicated a certain understanding, when the public comes to understanding that in some unjuridical way, just in general, that the protection of something has been provided. Would it not be better, when that is the case, uh, to 
proceed by uh, some means that would at least allow an elementary level of information to be shared with the public when a different course of action is to be followed. The Honourable Premier. Uh, uh, Speaker, I, I'm not sure what the question was, uh, really, I'm not. Uh, the reality of it is, I said in the process uh, that was uh, in place, uh, there would be public input and consultation on it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this was not a, a piece of uh, protected land, Mr. Speaker. Let's be clear about that. It's not someone's making this up. It wasn't protected, and now it's been delisted. It was never protected. It was one of a number of pieces of land across the province that the former government had looked at as potential candidates to be added to uh, our protected lands. Uh, in the meantime, Mr. Speaker, there was interest in that piece of property uh, to be able to develop economic opportunities in the region of the province that requires economic opportunities. And uh, it would be uh, the responsible thing for the government to do is to look at those options. And, and I want to tell the member there would be public consultation. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Well, I, I do, Mr. Speaker, want to say something about public consultation. Uh, the means by which uh, any piece of land uh, ended up being listed on the NDP's Our Parks and Protected Areas Plan was a means of extensive consultation. At that time, there were community meetings held across the province, around 20 of them. There were uh, a the multitude of interviews, way over a thousand of them, many, many written submissions. I think the order was around 3,000. So we're talking here about consultation on crown lands and land preservation with a capital C. Uh, the difficulty is, it seems to me, that that level of regard for consultation has not been honored here. So I, I want to ask, uh, the Premier, uh, does his government hold such low regard for community voices and public participation that when the, the public uh, has an issue that is of such concern to them, uh, there is, there is all this level of consultation is simply taken and, and apparently disregarded? The Honourable Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, if uh, the New Democratic Party, when they were in power, did all of this consultation, uh, that uh, deemed that was supposed to be protected, why didn't they protect it? Why did they put it on last as a potential piece of protected area, Mr. Speaker? Why didn't they just simply protect it? I think that's the better question. If they've done all of the public consultation that he's describing, why stop there? If you believe this should have been protected, why didn't they protect it, Mr. Speaker?